Christian apologist Josh McDowell is in hot water because of some remarks that he made at a conference concerning CRT, critical race theory, and some general comments about minorities. And he has made an apology. I have an article here that talks about it. I'll leave links to the information I'm giving in the video description. Also, if you like Christian nerdy content and analysis like this, make sure you subscribe to A Fresh Perspective. But uh, I want to talk about this a little bit, and I'd love to hear people's comments and thoughts on this situation. I really think that this speaks a lot into the sensitivities and the pressure and the dissension that we're feeling a lot today in our country and even in Christianity. It really comes out in the situation. I mean, Josh McDowell is a prolific author and a an apologist for Christianity who's been doing ministry for many years, uh, very respected from everything I know, but he really is actually uh, in quite a bit of trouble, I guess you could say, or at least he feels really badly because of some comments that he made. It says he apologizes for claiming most black families don't emphasize education. And this was uh, such a, a difficult situation that he actually wrote this uh, on Twitter, a statement. He said, at a recent conference, I made comments about race, the black family, and minorities that were wrong and hurt many people. It breaks my heart to know what deep pain I have caused. It has become clear to me, along with crew leadership, that I need to step back from my ministry and speaking engagements to enter a season of listening and addressing the growth areas that I have become aware of through this. During this time of meeting with others and learning, I hope to personally grow and better understand how I can help contribute to the reconciliation and unity that God desires for us all. So it sounds like from what he's saying there that he's actually stepping down a little bit from his speaking engagements and his ministry because of what has happened in this situation. And looking at the article, it does uh, give some indication as to what he specifically said. In his talk, he said, I do not believe blacks, African Americans, and many other minorities have equal opportunity. Why? Most of them grew up in families where there is not a big emphasis on education, security. You can do anything you want. You can change the world if you work hard. You will make it. So many African Americans don't have those privileges like I was brought up with, McDowell was quoted as saying. So I think this situation really shows, and the way that he communicated really shows the disconnect and the fissure that we have in our culture right now, uh, just different outlooks on the world. And actually, I was reading another article that I think gave a little bit clearer explanation as to what he was really getting at in all of this. He was criticizing critical race theory McDowell told Christian counselors that CRT negates all the biblical teaching about racism because it focuses on systems rather than sins of the human heart and said today's definition of social justice is not biblical. So it sounds to me like what he's saying is that if you focus on systems, you might miss your own responsibility for sin. Um, although I know that from the other side, uh, if you are a Christian, you might argue that we can easily miss the collective sin of, of a group of people. We get led into sin because of the systems around us, I think is how some people might argue it. But he does uh, say here all that not all Americans have equal opportunities to succeed. And then there's the quote that I read before. And then he added, the Bible only focuses on individual sin, not structural sin. Now, I'm sure that's a point that could be argued, whether the Bible does actually focus on communal sin, right? The sin of maybe a nation, for example. And I think it could be argued that there's a sense in which the Bible does pinpoint uh, systems, if you will. Whole religions, right, are false systems that uh, the Bible definitely condemns as sin. But absolutely, I hear what he's saying, that there is a emphasis in the Bible on individual sin. What I think all of this shows is that there's just two very different outlooks on life or emphases 
that people have. Some are focusing on the individual. Some are focusing on the institutions or the collective. And because he's focusing on the individual, he looks at things a certain way. And so he makes this generalized statements about minorities. The problem must be the way that they were brought up. And I think there is a lesson to be learned that even if you're trying to say something good, you know, it shows you that the way that you talk about people, the way that you generalize um, is going to be taken in a certain way. Um, and we do have to really think about how do we look at other people? How do we see other people? And this is why so many people are being charged today with white supremacy. Now, I'm not in favor of uh, calling people white supremacists if they are not, in fact, white supremacists. I think that that term, honestly, is, is being misused in many ways. But this is what they're getting at when they lay that charge at people. Uh, when someone makes a generalized statement about others and, and they're just looking at these groups of people as if they're all brought up a certain way and they're beneath the, the right way of being brought up. And that's the sense in which uh, some people are saying, see, that's white supremacy. And so that's really, I think, the issue here from uh, one standpoint is that Josh McDowell is evidencing to some people racism. And actually, there is uh, a tweet that I noticed here that says, I'm sitting here kind of stunned. I have a friend at this conference that Josh McDowell was speaking at. And in his tirade against CRT, Josh McDowell just said this, black people don't have access to opportunities, they say, uh, but it's because they weren't raised to value education and hard work. So this person obviously is very hurt by the statement that Josh McDowell made. But one of the things that I want to point out is if you actually look at Josh McDowell's talk in its entirety or the statements in their entirety, I don't think that he's racist. And he actually even uh, made a statement a few days ago. He says, my statement is quoted, does not reflect my own beliefs. And I want to begin by apologizing for my words and the implications they had. My statement started by saying, I do not believe blacks, African Americans, and many other minorities have equal opportunity. I do believe this. He's saying, I, I don't think they have equal opportunity. And he says, racism has kept equality from being achieved within our nation. So you can see here, he is really showing that he, um, he doesn't look down on people or he doesn't have a uh, animosity sort, uh, toward certain people. Um, he says, when I said that most minorities grew up in families where there is not a big emphasis on education and security, I made a generalized statement that does not reflect reality. And that was a mistake. And I think he's owning up to that. Um, <laughs> he's seeing now the, the consequence of the way that he communicated. But one of the things I really want to point out in all of this is I think everything going in our culture tends to lead us to take people in the worst light possible. Because honestly, what I see in what he's saying here, he goes on to say, I apologize and reiterate my Christian love for all races, nationalities, and people groups. My desire is that we as Christians would deal with both racism and inequality as the sins that they are in order to restore the unity and equality that God desires for all. I mean, you can see his heart there, that he really does love other people. He wants unity. But our culture and the situations we're facing are just leading us to look at other people in the worst light possible, to take their words in the worst light possible. And I think that's what I was seeing there on Twitter. It's like, okay, yes, he said some things, and I can understand why people would be offended, but you do have to look at it in context. You do have to understand kind of the, the big picture he's thinking about and the way he's looking about things. And really, he's criticizing critical race theory, as many others are. And he has uh, what he thinks are, are issues that are actually counterproductive and unbiblical when it comes to critical race theory. But at the same time, I think what you're seeing here is that when you attack CRT, you, you do actually have to take a look at the way that you look at things versus the way that other people might. Obviously, 
this shows that some people are very focused on, on the individual and individual sins. Other people are focused on more the institutional or systemic aspect of things. And I know as I'm talking about all of this, uh, people in, in their minds are responding. And of course, I want to hear comments on all of this. But the main point that I want to make in all of this is that, as I said, our culture is leading us to take people in the worst light possible. And I would encourage you, even if you are on the other side of the aisle from someone else, uh, try to understand where they're coming from. Because if someone does believe that collectively there's a group of people that somehow are doing something wrong, and I think that's what's being said uh, to, to a large degree in, our, in, an, in some circles of Christianity, they're saying that, you know, it's, it's Christians are not individually racist, but we do have to look at the way we collectively look at other people. And so I think that's a lesson to be learned, but also taking people in the worst light possible in the other direction, that just because someone thinks that an individual needs to take responsibility and that the way that they're brought up affects them, um, you know, just saying, okay, then I can tell by that statement you're racist. We have to be careful of that too. So I know these are very touchy issues and I don't know if I'm communicating in a very helpful way. I'm trying to think through this myself, but I think the fact that someone as respected as Josh McDowell and someone who's had such a faithful ministry for so many years, having to step back basically because of comments really shows the cultural moment that we're in right now. And I hope we will all learn lessons from this. I'd love to hear what you think about all of this in the comments section below. Try to keep your comments civil, respectful, and edifying to conversation. Hopefully we can help each other to think through these things in a good way, in a way that would encourage good relationships, and that we would actually be God-honoring in the way that we handle different matters. But thank you so much for taking some time to listen to some of my thoughts on this whole issue brought to you from a fresh perspective.